So today I want to talk about some takeaways from this wild week of college football and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today we are doing to the late night recap show. I just got off of my shift with ESPN Radio, Jeff Dickerson, game night. Had a good time. Talked about the NFL. Talked about Tiafimo Lopez unifying the belts at 135 pounds at 23 years old. Talk with Mark Craigel about it. It's probably not going to be the kind of feat that we ever see again in our lifetimes. Very cool for me to be able to do radio tonight. Talk about the Dodgers getting into a Game 7. Talking about the Tampa Bay Rays getting into the World Series. Man, Randy Arozarena, seven home runs in the postseason alone. That dude's story is awesome. You know what else's story is awesome? Arkansas' story is awesome. Two pick sixes. Six INTs held Matt Corral to 200 yards passing a, just a week after he put up three bills plus on Alabama. Sam Pittman getting the SEC, well, Arkansas's first SEC home win since 2016. Last time they got an SEC home win in Donald W. Reynolds Field, Barack Obama was president of the United States. Rank Arkansas, you cowards. They're out there making it happen. Barry Odom is an outstanding defensive coordinator. Then there was Alabama, who apparently decided they was going to pick up where they left off against Ole Miss. Through six quarters into the first half against Georgia, Alabama had given up 72 points. For perspective here, Arkansas has given up 65 points in the last three games, and Clemson dropped 73 on Georgia Tech's skull in the largest point differential in ACC conference play history today alone. Then Nick Saban goes in at halftime and tells his defense, put the shackles on this dude Stetson Bennett, this former walk-on. You do not let this dude carve you up because going into that halftime, only two quarterbacks had passed for more yards in the first half against the Nick Saban defense than Stetson Bennett had. Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow. Guess who Stetson Bennett is not? And then you have turnovers. You see Stetson Bennett sees that he's actually a human being on earth. And you watch Alabama put this out of reach. Meanwhile, we got Matt Jones out here just destroying people to the tune of 400 plus yards in three consecutive games. He had 20 of 27 for 435, four tutties against Texas A&M. 28 of 32 for 417, two tutties against Ole Miss. And 24 of 32 for 417 yards, four tutties against number three Georgia if we're given the Heisman Trophy today, Mac Jones wins it. That's how good he has been offensively. Alabama solidifies himself as the number two team, even as it feels like there's a gap that's developing between Clemson and Alabama, but there's also a gap between between Alabama and literally everybody else as we await the Big Ten kicking off next Saturday. Number five, North Carolina, who we knew was a soft number five, Gives up the booty to Florida State in Tallahassee. Mike Norvell gets his first ACC win as head coach of Florida State because you'll know that he missed the last game they played because he had COVID out here doing these interviews without a mask on. Mike, what we learned? What, 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 what we learned? What we learned is if you're going to go up 31-7 to against North Carolina first half, expect them to come on. They didn't come on quite strong enough, though. Mac Brown had this team number five in the country. First time they've been ranked fifth or better in the country since 1997, 23 years. Last time Mac Brown was the head coach. They were not supposed to fly this closely to the sun this year. I think this has found money for a North Carolina team. We expect to be good, but not top five good. And yeah, Jordan Travis and LaDamian Webb exposed them. Jordan Travis completed all eight passes in this game, but he also rushed for over 100 yards along with LaDainian and Webb. Great win for Florida State, even if it is a flimsy number five team. Auburn getting exposed. I told y'all Bo Nix wasn't no good. I told y'all that. This man cannot throw open a barn door. And Chad Morris, Gus Malzahn still got him out there throwing passes when it should be Kalen Newton out there throwing passes. We had dudes from South Carolina getting on the Zooms talking about 
I'm glad Bo Nix thought to throw me the ball so many times. Like, for real, that's what they said. That's how Auburn's getting clowned as the number 15 team in the country. Now you're not going to be the number 15 team in the country. Ought to be Arkansas, to be quite honest with you, especially after what we saw from last week. Kentucky continues to play outstanding defense, even if Tennessee absolutely is a imposter. And then we look around the rest of college football. West Virginia gets a decent enough win against Kansas. All quiet, mostly on that front. We saw some great football being played. Memphis getting the 50-49 win against Central Florida earlier tonight is a lot of fun. But my goodness, I did not expect to see this kind of wild action in college football in, during this week. I thought that everything would go as it was. I was excited to know that we got number two Alabama versus number three Georgia off and running. But think about this. No SEC East team has beaten Nick Saban since 2010. That's when the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, was at South Carolina and handed Nick Saban an L. Nobody else has done it. Then add to that, Nick Saban 25-14 and 14 against AP Top 25 teams, which is ridiculous. But even more ridiculous than that, he is now 22-0 and 0 versus his former assistants. Kirby Smart... Tried to make it happen. I'm going to give him credit for bringing in store brand Cam Newton, who even decided to opt out. I'm going to give him credit for bringing in Todd Munkin. But he got JT Daniels on the bench, and he got Stetson Bennett out here throwing the ball to the other team with his eyes closed and whatnot. Even though you got Zamir White out there, you got James Cook having a hell of a day, you got George Pickens trying to do everything he can and then some, and you got a defense that was playing with Alabama at least through one half of football and really through – three quarters-ish of football. I expect us to see some more moving and shaking next Saturday as we kick off the Big Ten. I know that Michigan and Minnesota is going to be a big game. Of course, Ohio State and Nebraska is a big game because it's Ohio State, not necessarily because it's Nebraska. I'm very excited to find out whether or not Arkansas continues to be great. Talking with Bill Connolly on ESPN Radio earlier tonight, he said, look, if you look at Arkansas's schedule, Ole Miss is actually the worst team that they have left to face. So it's good they get the two and two through four games because it's going to be a tough road for them ahead. But I think everything else for Arkansas has found money. It's a good football team. It's a good football program. Sam Pittman with the overnight fix when Chad Moore said it wasn't going to be an overnight fix. And now Chad Moore's over there with Auburn, and they're on the way down. This is not a great look if you are of the Moore's persuasion. Might get rough there in Auburn real quick, fast, and in a hurry. All right, that is it for me. Doses.